I didn't always have a bed to sleep on. I didn't always have food. One time my dad shot me with a paintball gun and then he left. After being separated from their parents, sometimes without even being able to take any personal belongings, they are taken to stay at homes they never visited, live with families they have never met, and attend schools they have never seen. Sometimes all we had to eat was the ketchup in the fridge. We were waiting for our dad to pick us up, and instead of our dad picking us up, another guy we didn't even know picked us up and brought us to a strange home. There are over 400,000 foster kids in the U.S., 60,000 in California, 28,000 in Los Angeles. Only 45% of foster care children are able to graduate high school. Out of the 70% who want to go to college, only 10% do. Out of the 10% that attend, 3% graduate. I was neglected. I used to be left in my crib for a long time. I was in four foster homes before I was one year old. Foster kids have been abused, neglected, or abandoned by their parents. They have been removed from their home by the government. The goal of the foster care system is to reunite their children with their birth families. However, many are forced to be sent for adoption when returning to their family is not the best idea for their well-being. There have been many incidences where children have not been supported. For example, cries of abuse have led to the death of children in foster homes. Researchers have concluded that after foster care, only 20% have been said to be doing well, double the mental illness, higher rates of PTSD was double the rate of Iraq vets, Foster children were three times more likely to be living in poverty, 15 times less to have finished college, and almost one third of the former foster kids have reported to been abused sometime during their foster care stay. Get it. 
adopted in general, which would be one goal for these kids, but it isn't often attained. So teenagers have a particularly rough time. that both social workers and CASA need to do better. Um, some cases may just require someone helping the child with some of their educational needs, and it's not a bad situation because they have either found a perspective, adopt a family, or at least they're settled in a family that's going to keep them and, uh, you know, they're, they're be a part of something. Um, but in terms of CASA, we get cases that are referred to us. These kids don't have time to waste. They've already been damaged. And they do a lot of recruitment and get out in the community, you know, and try to educate people and tell them what they can do and how they can help. And, um... Allow them to better services, you know, um, not some baloney, you know, a person who is going to be there for six months who has no experience with someone who watched his little brother get killed. There's a lot of emotional baggage, right? They've either been abused or they've been abandoned or neglected. Illness, 
continue to go with her. So I quit as his car. So that was in there too, about Alex. Um, so I quit as his casa, and he's here um, two or three days a week with me. Do not harden your heart and shut your hand against the needy kinsman. Rather, you should open your hand and lend him some fish to whatever he needs. Deuteronomy 15.8 This piece of text is explaining that one should open their heart and hand for the needy. Furthermore, one must provide the needy man with whatever he needs. This relates to how Ms. Zaretsky became a foster parent. She knew that one of these kids that she was working with was in a detrimental situation, so she opened up her heart and her home for this boy named Alex. You shall not wrong a stranger or oppress him. You shall not oppress orphans. This piece of text talks about how one should never deny helping people, may it be strangers or orphans. Costa helps all orphans that come their way. Ms. Zaretsky has proven to us that people like her can help make a children's lives a bit better by caring and helping. Costa volunteers are the voice of the children and certainly do not deny them help in any way. If an orphan boy comes along asking for financial help to be married off, we first provide him with all of his basic needs. We rent a house for him and prepare a bed for him and all the other household utensils he needs, and only afterwards do we marry him off to a wife. This piece of text is explaining a situation where an orphan boy is in need. It is obligated to provide this boy with shelter, somewhere to sleep, and other necessities. In addition, it is obligated to find him a wife to marry in order to create a family of his own. This is one of the things that CASA helps with. They help the kids go to foster homes where they would be supported by the government. Mistreatment of children occurs more frequently of those living among poverty. It is common for kids to be brought to attention through welfare projects. Since 2013, the declining economy in LA has resulted in a shortage of beds, homes, and parents. The state is constraining organization by not providing enough money for things such as free child care, diapers, and transportation. On average, a toddler's needs cost about $680 a month. However, the government is unable to meet these needs. My name is Kate Briggs, and I am the program coordinator for our internship program, which is called the Sustainable Life Project. program is six months and we bring in one intern in every restaurant and so we're looking for someone who has moved out of the foster care system so over 18 uh, younger than 24 so we're trying to pinpoint that period in time where someone is released from the official you know government sponsored foster care system and they're they're kind of left in their own devices left out on their own and we're there to kind of pick up where the foster care system leaves off so a lot of um, young adults in that situation really struggle with, you know, they don't have any work experience, they don't really know how to get a job, they don't have the education level to get a certain job that they want, um, you know, they kind of are lacking in the support and the skills to transition into fully supporting themselves. So the idea of the internship is to give them not just the job, but the, you know, the peer support, the mentorship support, um, all kinds of extra support, extra education, we have workshops, um, we do trips to our farms, we do cooking classes with them, so all meant to be a holistic approach to creating a more well-rounded person who's more capable of taking care of themselves, of having a job where they're paying for all of their own, you know, apartment, etc. kind of helps them decide you know what their long-term goal would be because at the end of the internship if they're interested they get brought on for full-time positions at Tender Greens. A lot of time coming from situations where they've grown up without even a grocery store in that neighborhood. It's like liquor stores are the only place to get food which is not even real food that you're getting there so I mean to actually go to a farm and see how animals are raised or how this food is produced is a huge learning experience for them because the fact that we're not just trying to provide job skills is really replacing that parent role that a lot of these young adults have missed out on. 65% of Maine's people without a place to live, I mean it's homelessness is a huge problem. Yeah. Some of the youths do have good support in terms of their social worker or um, their volunteer positions called the CASAs that work with them really closely. So some of them have been 
connected with at least some adult figure that has been a really positive influence in their life. Some of them unfortunately don't get any of that really and they're just kind of, where am I going to get my next meal? Where am I going to sleep tonight? It's, you know, this person that was kind of a parent figure to me is now moved on and is not officially required yeah. to support me anymore. The reason that it's called the Sustainable Life Project is we don't want it to be something where we're holding their hand and as soon as we let go of their hand, they're reaching out for someone else or they're yeah. not able to help themselves. The idea is that we're giving them a leg up so that they will come out at the other end being able to sustain their own lives. I get to be a parent without having to do all the hard work of raising a kid and I get to just have these really yeah. wonderful experiences. 60% of them end up staying with us full time. Some of them have moved on to, you know, one went to Shanghai to help open a restaurant. Um, oh. We're very into promoting people up within the company, so yeah. it's, you know, set your sights on where you want to be, and, and we continue to support the interns even after they've graduated, and we kind of know that they're, they have a special status, and so we're keeping an eye on them and making sure that they're moving along toward whatever goal they want to pursue. So having them That's end awesome. up in a, in a position that they're happy with and that they feel like is their ultimate success is, I think, our goal for them. In California, something like 70% of anyone who's been in the state penitentiary system has been in foster care at some point. It's a hugely broken system that needs a lot of work done to it. One takes the hand of an Israelite and gives him a gift or loan or makes a partnership with him or finds him employment in order to strengthen him until he need to ask help of no one. This piece of text is explaining that when there is an Israelite in need, it is necessary to give him a gift, loan, find him a partnership, finding him a job. It is necessary to help the needy man until he reaches the point that he could independently support himself. This is what the Sustainable Life Project is for. They are there to help their kids learn value skills that they can keep and remember forever. After their internship is over, many do stay and are now employed by Tender Green. Do not allow him to fall down and collapse altogether, in which case it would be difficult to pick him up again. Rather support him while his hand is still falling. Via Claw 25. This piece of text is explaining that when someone is in need, it is our task immediately to help him before he completely hits rock bottom, rather than waiting for him to be in desperate need. This is important because it makes our job of assisting the man much easier. It mirrors the goals of the Sustainable Life Project by trying to make the transitioning process easier to manage. They are there to give these foster kids a better future by giving them an education that they could use for the rest of their life so they can hold the job, a family, and have a successful and happy life. If changes are not made by the year 2020, 20,000 children will die from abuse and neglect before turning 5. More than 10.5 million children will spend time in the foster care system. More than 300,000 will leave the foster care system with poor health, being unprepared for the future and no- No, I don't think anybody expects us to be perfect, but we can do our best to love the kids and provide them our love and our resources and just take care of them the best we can. Being there at night to tuck them in and sometimes just hold them and help them understand um, what's going on. I can't imagine leaving them without a family to work through this on their own.